Hi guys, Kellen and I spend all of our time trying to figure out how to navigate complicated cannabis challenges. Today, we are excited to bring to you a solution for your accounting needs. Navigating 280E, keeping clean books, and providing financial and accounting advice is a massive headache for so many businesses. End to End is a team of CPAs with backgrounds from the big public firms that specialize in the cannabis industry. End to End is offering a no-cost consultation if you tell them the dime sent you. That's right, free accounting advice. Go to n2nadvisors.com now to take advantage of this. That's n, the number 2, n, a, d, v, i, s, o, r, s.com to get free accounting advice now. This is The Dime, a 10-minute dive into the cannabis and hemp industry through trends, insights, predictions, and tangents. What's up, guys? Welcome back to The Dime. As always, I've got my right-hand man, Kellen Finney, here. And this week, we've got a special guest, Chad Lieber from Purple. Chad, thanks so much for taking the time. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you guys doing, Brian? Kellen? Doing well. Doing well. Really stoked to have you here and really interested to kind of dive into Purple, what it is, and kind of how you fit into the whole marketplace. So I think the best way to get started would be to describe a little bit about your background and how you got into the cannabis space. Uh, yeah, so my background is is in developing instruments that use light to measure things, and uh, and I was I was uh, doing this for for the pharmaceutical industry, uh, making quality control equipment, um, so they know that that each pill has what they think is in there, and uh, and and that's right around the time that that uh, the U.S. started legalizing, and it it uh, kind of seemed like an obvious opportunity that uh, that that this industry needed some quality control as well um and and uh yeah entered this uh, about 6 years ago what is purple right for those who who've probably seen some of your swag at some of the shows or some of the designs what is purple so purple is a a handheld uh cannabis potency and moisture testing device um it's it, it's a way for for uh for people to be able to test their weed uh at home or, or on their own without sending things out to a lab. So do you think it's best suited in at home? Like, where would you say the ideal user is? Because I know you discussed it at home in a lab. Can you just kind of give more of an emphasis on where you see this in the placement area? Uh, I can talk about where, where we've been selling it. Um, and and uh, it's actually in neither of those two. Uh, well, it, it, it is in those two, but the dominant one is in... Uh, in, in two places, uh, cultivators are are using it when they're when they're uh, uh, pheno hunting or or uh, you know they they actually want some real time tests on their crop. Um, so cultivators are are uh, definitely the the biggest part of our our uh, consumer base. Um, and then uh, uh, more interestingly, now in uh, in Europe, uh, particularly in the Netherlands, these Dutch coffee shops um, just in the last few months have, have been, uh, have been buying purple like crazy. I think there are something like 500 coffee shops in the Netherlands. And, uh, just in the last, what, six months now, uh, 150 of them are using, using purple devices to, uh, uh, mostly to test the product they're buying. Um, because, because they've had a, had a problem that, uh, that the cannabis supply there is, is often not what it's advertised to be. So it's like a party trick kind of where they show up and they are able to test it to kind of verify the product. Uh, I guess it's a little more than a party trick just because uh, their bottom line depends on it. So, so they're trying to buy some, some, uh, you know, a really, uh, really nice, really nice uh, THC flower and they're being sold CBD flower and they can't tell the difference um, mm-hmm. or, or CBD flower that, that may have been sprayed with, uh, with, with a synthetic. Um, and, and, uh, so, so it's really just to, uh, just to, to make sure that their, their inventory supply is, is actually what they think. So it's again, quality assurance. Yeah. I think that's a, a huge area that I think sometimes people don't really understand. So, well, I know Kellen's got an interesting story, maybe a sad story that kind of goes along with that where purple played a huge role in kind of helping to validate what was going on. Kellen, do you want to share Yeah, I mean, that's exactly where I've seen a lot of traction with the purple too, is individuals growing hemp these days are getting really good at it. And turns out that hemp and cannabis are very, very similar, except for the CBD and THC factor. And so that problem is not only a problem in in Europe, but it's also a huge problem out in California too. Um, In the uh, legacy market, I know, it's just it's rampant, right? I mean, they, you can't tell the difference looking at them. So the purple has, um, at least given some, 
some people some ability to differentiate because that's really the only way to tell the difference these days. And and that's kind of a hot topic in general. Um, I mean, uh, I, I don't know if you guys wanted to go down this rabbit hole, but but uh, the uh, you know THC versus CBD, uh, you you really can't tell by inspection anymore. Um, there are some some really really nice CBD flowers that that smell and look identical to a to a THC. And I know there are a lot of people who say they can tell, but uh, but we've we've kind of put that to the test. And and it's a that's a hot topic right now in law enforcement that uh, there there are some of these states that that uh, do not have canna legalization, but because hemp is is uh, nationwide, they've they've tried to make can, uh, hemp illegal because the law enforcement can't tell the difference. So yeah, I found myself in uh, uh, talking to, uh, to, to people I didn't anticipate I would, some legislators in, in some pretty conservative states, um, just trying to show them how, how purple can tell the difference. And that's a, it's a fascinating experience being with them. I mean, and the purple is honestly like the perfect solution for law enforcement, you know? A quick and dirty, you're gonna be able to tell if it's a CBD flower or a THC flower. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, right there on the spot. There, there's another company actually using using a, a device uh, damn near identical to to the the purple, um, uh, developing it for for law enforcement use, like for for uh, you know what is that white powder, um, just street drug identification. Um, so it, yeah, it, it's uh, it is good for that market. That's that you know law enforcement is is not where we're looking to to carve out our niche, um, but but in the interest of hey, can we can we preserve the hemp industry and and stop that from becoming uh, uh, you know made illegal in certain states? We we certainly want to help that. Yeah, and it's interesting that you say, Kellen, about the the difference between the hemp and the THC flower because obviously in California we had that experience. We had a bunch of individuals with some some long time experience in the legacy market and a couple of Jamaicans be blown away by the fact that hemp couldn't be convinced that this was an actual THC flower. And if, if these people are convinced, right, staring at it, that it cannot be hemp, a police officer who's doing a routine stop might have a really hard time with understanding the difference. And having a tool like that is really valuable for them. What's the, the roadmap for Purple? Is it going to be solely on THC, CBD? What do you have in store for the future? Is there anything you can share there? Uh, sure. So, so uh, we came out of the gates with with uh, THC and CBD and flour because uh, we we had to start somewhere and we weren't going to add every bell and whistle before we went to market. Um, so, uh, so uh, we started selling with that. Then we added moisture and water activity for flour. Uh, what m- maybe in the fall uh, of last year, um, and and that was kind of delayed uh, because of COVID. And uh, and and now our, our we had been planning on on releasing an extract potency update uh, by now, but uh, but COVID has has thrown us for a loop, and and we just can't get the people and equipment uh, to the to the labs we need to get to, um, or they won't even have us there right now. Um, so hoping this this uh, the pandemic is is uh, trending in the right direction uh, finally. So um, hopefully hopefully that'll let us get back at it. So yeah, uh, extracts uh, will be coming on and and uh, and then uh, beyond that um, we we may be branching out into some other technologies and and bringing some some other products beyond the Purple Pro into the uh, into the Purple Scientific line card. Oh, that's exciting. From an in-house quality check. Obviously, right now, there's kind of that missing component, and it's really exciting that Purple can kind of fill the void of being kind of an internal check without sending it out to a lab. Kellen, do you see in-house quality control being a big growth area in the space? So honestly, that is how I was interested, how I got interested in the Purple, and then how I actually actually recommend the Purple to a lot of our clients that we do lab build-outs to. Um, it's, I think it's invaluable, especially if you're doing, uh, an ethanol extraction or a CO2 extraction, or even a hydrocarbon extraction, you literally can take the material that you're about to load into the extractor. You throw it in the purple, you get a really quick measurement, right? You do your extraction and then you can instantly pull some material out and measure it post extraction, right? And having that real time, almost real time data on that biomass, what is a completely uh, it's a game changer in the extraction space. And so I've recommended it to all of our facilities that we've uh, consulted on. And and I think as the technology uh, builds, especially into the extract area, I think it's just going to become even more valuable for cannabis manufacturers and hemp manufacturers, right? Just having that access to the information in real time to be able to optimize your um, extractions and your processes is, it's it's game changer, you know? 
is really yeah, our tagline. Think, yeah. Our tagline is working. And, yeah. <laughs> and Kellen, Kellen, thank uh, you know, saying that you're recommending it to uh, to all these clients. Uh, thank you. Um, and I just wanted to point out that the uh, the measuring pr- uh, post extraction is is kind of using the device off label, so to speak. Um, we haven't we haven't uh, done any any uh, quality checks on that. So uh, if it, it you know we encourage people to use this in any way they can, and and if that's working for you, awesome. Um, but but that was, was part of our the, extract update. Yeah, you got to make the, make sure the materials uh, really dry. So CO two and hydrocarbon tend to not be problematic. It's ethanol extraction. If there's some residual ethanol in there, I don't yeah. know what it is, but it definitely kind of gives you some some weird results. So if you just let that evaporate and then measure it, then you can get a, a more accurate measurement. It's what I've seen in in practice at least. <laughs> Sweet. So can I, uh, Brian? Can I go back on your question about the roadmap and say that very soon we're going to be announcing a, an, an exciting development with. Uh, uh, with post extracted material. Great yes. news. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Perfect. <laughs> um, no, that, that, you know, part of the, uh, part of the, the way that we want to go with this is, is to be able to have a closed loop solution. Um, every other manufacturing industry, they've, they've got, uh, they've got sensors screening the product in real time. Uh, just, just, uh, so you don't have any waste. Everything is, is operating on thin margins and, and, uh, and, and I certainly see this being the same way. Um, but, but now rather than running an entire batch and then sending a, sending some of your extract off to a lab, waiting two weeks, uh, you, you would be able to get all this information in real time. I mean, obviously you're still going to have to send your final product out for third party testing. That's, that's never going to change. Um, but, but, uh, you know, there's a huge cost savings in, in making sure that you didn't blow it, um, that, that you can get the car back on the road while, while you're still trying to get where you're going. Yeah, I don't and especially in a hyper competitive space where it's just a race to the bottom right now, mm-hmm. every percent on your margin that you can gain is an absolute, it's a huge competitive edge for survival and all of those um, aspects. Uh, and, and I think that's why, uh, so the technology that's under the hood of, of Purple Pro is, is used in pretty much every industry and in every adjacent industry and in, in, uh, food and pharma and beverages. Um, and, and it really is all that just to, just to, uh, to make sure that, that you can correct a batch while it's still correctable. So you don't have any waste and, and, uh, and you really, really streamline all your product costs. I don't think that can be said loud enough. Like, I just don't think people in the space, like hear that and actually understand how valuable of an integration of a piece of technology that purple is bringing to the table. Uh, but I think that's going to come. I mean, I think that's just because of the, uh, the nascent of, of the industry that, that there have been a lot of people making a whole lot of money relatively easily. Um, but, but now that the industry is maturing, it's becoming competitive and, and now it's, it's going to require those sorts of things. Yeah, I agree. I think it would be really helpful for our listeners. Uh, it's a common phrase where we express to, to our friends and our colleagues, how simple using the purple is. Could you just take us through the easy steps on how simple to use a purple pro could be? Yeah. So, so that was, uh, and I'm glad you brought that up because when we, when we first started planning this, the, the whole idea behind this is that we want people to be able to test themselves and it needs to be operable by anybody. Um, normally this kind of equipment is sold to, to a team of PhDs and engineers um, who, who have a different mindset when they're employing uh, technology than, uh, than, you know, somebody who, who mail orders it and uses it at home. So when we set out, we, we, we thought we want this to be no more complex than a coffee maker. Um, I mean, it is a scientific instrument, so you do have to follow some steps, but, uh, but so you have to, you know, you have to put the filter under the coffee beans when you're making, when you're making coffee or you learn the hard way. Um, so, so they're kind of similarly, we've got a couple of basic steps that, that uh, you know the the device. The first thing you do, uh, you, we've got a the device, which is uh, we kind of call it's a hockey puck. Um, it's it's about the size of a hockey puck. You pair it with your phone. Uh, you you register that that uh, the device to your phone, and then uh, to to operate it once a week, you've got to calibrate it. Um, and and the calibration is already built into the box. So all you do is flip your flip the puck over and uh, and and hit the button on your phone. Uh, then you're you're good for a week. Um, and then in terms of measuring a sample, you, uh, you grind up some flour, um, you, you hit the button on your phone and uh, what, four or five seconds later, uh, it, it gives you all your results. Let's talk about anchor. If you haven't heard about anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. That's right. No more excuses. Get your lazy ass off the couch. Go start a podcast. 
There's the creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Once again, no more excuses. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Could it be easier? Even better, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. That's right. They're paying us for this ad. Thank you very much, Anchor. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started now. It, it's, it is as easy as you've described it. And it's funny because every time we put the unit in front of an individual and we go through the steps, their typical response is, is that it? And yeah. Yeah, that's it. Now you yeah. Get, then he goes, how long do I wait for a result? And I say, did you look at your phone? And he goes, oh, there you go. Yeah, that, that's really key. And, and uh, you know, when you're measuring a, a flower, um, you know, whether it's five seconds or, or 30 seconds isn't a big deal. But um, particularly like what we were talked about down the line of making making inline system. So it's giving you constant results on your on your extraction. Um, you know, being able to have a, a, a result more or less instantly is, is a big deal. Um, and it, it, it is a it, it shows well in front of people like we're realizing that during COVID where, where we can't get in front of people. Um, so there's only so much you can do with with uh, slick ads and things like that. Um, but but uh, really getting this in, in front of people, it's kind of like being at a craps table, I think. You know, I, I love crap. Brian, you lo- uh, you're a craps player as well, right? Yeah, former craps player. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, yeah, but you know the uh, you know the joy know. of it. Yeah, it's that, uh, whenever you get a good result. Right open, yeah, people just kind of gravitate towards it. And I remember when we were in Vegas for MJ Biz and just watching a bunch of home grows come by and test their products and just scream with excitement yeah. of just how well they've done. It's just it was so nice to see everyone so happy. And I think this will be a really popular device as as kind of more states come online and more people start growing at home, it'll just be another device to kind of understand what's going on. And it's so easy to use. And I think until you actually see it, I think people have this stigma in their mind, scientific device, hard to use. And I think Purple, you guys do a really good job of explaining how simple and easy to use. And I think that'll give it a a lot more adaptability as people understand the capabilities it can bring to the table. Uh, We certainly hope so. And, and you know, I, I think there's also also the part about uh, about people's expectations and and uh, that there there have been some other entries into this space uh, that that really have advertised a lot more than than they could actually deliver, um, and and it was pseudoscience. So so we've kind of we've had to overcome some of that, um, but but we we've been really happy that the acceptance has, has been really good, and and uh, it really seems that people are rooting for for purple. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to be as, as, uh, as transparent as we possibly can be and in, in letting people know what we're doing. And, uh, and, and we're not, we're not bullshitting them. Uh, we, we want to give them real science and we want to make it easy to use. So listener question, and this is the number one question that we are asked about the purple and you are the perfect person to answer this. Is the purple pro accurate? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I guess everything is accurate. So, so, uh, this has been a hot topic lately. Um, but, but, uh, you know, accuracy is, is basically how close to the bullseye, uh, you know, you're throwing a dart at a bullseye. It's, it's, uh, how close on average you are to the bullseye. Um, and, and, uh, in, in general, we, we, our bullseye, um, are, are the HPLC test done at labs. Um, and we measure the exact same sample uh, with our device. And then, and then, uh, they test that, that small half a gram or whatever it is of, of a uh, sample. Um, and in our THC is, uh, is accurate within 1.89%. So we just say 2%. And, uh, and our CBD is, uh, accurate within, uh, like 0.96 or something like that. But we also just say 2% because it's easier just to say 2%. For everything, um, so so that means on average, if if our device measures a twenty five, then uh, and you send it to the lab, it would be between twenty three and twenty seven. Yeah, right, right where you'd want it to be. And I personally believe that I think some people have a hesitancy with accuracy because they've gotten such variance with their third party labs that they're sort of hesitant to kind of trusting it from like a number standpoint. And I, I just think that that kind of plays into the stigma as a whole, as that people are kind of a little skeptical. And as things evolve, I think that'll be a very common exception where people will just don't do that anymore. And, and uh, I mean, people are right in that regard because, uh, 
you know, everything in, in this industry is maturing, including the lab testing. So, so you've got a couple of problems. You've got uh, no federal standard. Um, so, so different states use different test standards. Um, and, and some of them are, are almost laughable um, in their simplicity of, of what states require from a scientific standpoint. Um, so it gives, a, it gives a lot of error or, or kind of a, a, a noise factor um, between different labs or between different labs in different states. And then you also you see some of the stuff in the news about some of the, the labs who are putting their, their thumb on the scale, so to speak, and uh, you know, trying to get more business by giving, giving higher numbers. Um, so, so that doesn't help the reputation either. Um, and, and I, I don't know that any, any of this really becomes a, a well-oiled machine until there is a federal standard. Um, so that's why we go to, to, uh, reputable labs that we've worked with for a while. We, we, uh, don't think that they're putting their thumb on the scale and, and, uh, we've, we've seen all their, their procedures. We do that in multiple States just so, so we could probably be more accurate, uh, or our error would be less if we calibrated to just one lab. Um, but, uh, you know, that's, that's really not feasible. So, so we kind of take the average from, from three different labs. So before we wrap, we always ask all of our guests a question that we're excited to ask you. When was the last time you took any cannabinoids? <laughs> uh, last night. Yeah. It's, uh, that's, that's the only question. Like, uh, it's just a common question. I, should I have done it right before this, before this podcast? Would, we had a would person have who's it? done it on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> so, I mean, we've had it instantly. Um, yeah. so I didn't, I didn't on this podcast, but maybe, maybe down the line, once purple releases some cool new stuff, uh, you can have me back on and then we'll try it. You know, we'll do some case control. Yeah. Um, I think I could probably, could probably tell more entertaining stories next time. <laughs> yeah. And, and I've got some really good stories too, from when we took it to one of the parties where we were testing it in a smoking lounge and people's minds were just blown by the idea that here's a device. This guy was literally smoking an L sitting next to me and his eyes are like, can I test it? And I was like, you can do whatever you want, dude. Right. And he like literally stops, he grabs his butt and he just puts it down. He's like, I don't want to smoke this anymore. I want this. And it was just so funny to see. And he was like on the spot. He was like, how much for that? And we told him the price and he was like, I'll take it right now. And I was like, it's not for sale, dude. Like we're not like, <laughs> this isn't something you just buy and think. I was like, here's, the, here's a card. If you want to go get it. And it was such an eye opening experience for somebody who had smoked all the time to have a device like that where he could test his product in front of him and it was just blown away. No, absolutely. And, and like you said, what did you say? Parlor trick? Um, I yeah, mean, that, it was a party trick, right? I've taken that, it to friends' houses. It, that totally, in that use case, absolutely. Yeah, it's a great It's a cool party. one, but there's science behind this yes, party trick. Yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> um, so prediction time. We taught it about federal standards. Yep. When do you believe, Chad, will have federal standards? And what do you hope it will look like? Um, I... Uh, Hell if I know when it's going to happen. I mean, obviously now with a new administration, I'm a lot more optimistic. So, uh, you know, there, there's been talk that it would happen in the next year. So I'm an optimistic dude. I'll, I'll, I'll say that in the next year, uh, it, it would be de descheduled and then the, uh, the FDA would get guidance. And I think they've already got a shortcut on that. So I think, uh, like the, uh, what was it? The, the, uh, cannabis influorescence guide, the, the, the stuff by El Soli's group, um, has some some HPLC standards. Honestly, I don't really care what they are. Just so long as everybody, all the labs are playing on a level playing field, it would make our job a lot easier. Because because uh, you know right now we're we're trying to we're trying to match a moving number. Um, that that surprisingly we do we do really well at it. But we could we could all do a lot better um, once once everybody's kind of cooking with the same recipe. Yeah, Kellen, Mister Pessimistic. Yeah. No, I mean I agree. I know <laughs> NIST. I know NIST is also working on standards right now, so I think yeah. that will, will really help just uh, alleviate some of the frustrations that um, you see from lab to lab, from uh, accuracy and precision standpoint. Right. Um, as far as de scheduling, I think that it's probably. I think we'll be descheduled potentially within the year, completely uh, or not descheduled, decriminalized. Right. Like actually legal. Probably not till 2024. I'm sticking with my my original prediction. 2024, it'll be federally legal, but I could see it being decriminalized within the year. 
I can't wait to clip you saying 2024 a hundred times when it's <laughs> faster than it and just playing it on loop sooner, man. Like enough with that. You see how many governors have come out and just pressed the need to legalize. We saw Virginia just flip the switch and go. They're talking about Kentucky. So if all these states are expediting this with it, like you said, Chad, there is an aggressive need and the FDA knows this. And I wouldn't be shocked if they're working on this as we speak in hopes of having something sooner rather than later. So optimistic, Brian, will say six months. You guys always play these optimist, pessimist roles or, or yeah. does it change yeah. by issue? No, it's it's it. Well, it should change by issue. But typically, Kellen is extremely pessimistic. And I am <laughs> typically extremely optimistic. So naturally, we end up falling a certain way. Yeah. If, if Kellen did come off optimistic, I think I'd be really uncomfortable if we're going to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just think it's going to take a long, a much longer time to legalize it's going to be a state's issue i think the federal government is just like hands off they'll let the states figure out what they want to do and they're not going to really get their hands involved because i think it's at the end of the day they're just going to be like it's a state issue we'll let each state decide right and then we're not like the overarching force that's saying cannabis is legal or not i don't know that's just my my two cents on it why did you say 2024 you think uh before the next election yeah, I think that Biden will use it as like a running uh, thing to run for re-election. So um, for what it's worth, I said that Trump was going to do that. I was saying 2020 because <laughs> I thought for sure Trump was going to legalize just to take some wind out of the sails of whoever yeah. he was running against. Um, <laughs> I thought he was going to do that. Yeah. 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 How many states, though, like how many states become adult use before it's like we should just federally do it if, if we end up with... 35 states yeah is that is that enough to be like all right well we should just make it because some of the the more conservative states even they're having conversations about it so like just the fact that they're talking about it makes me think that it's it's happening faster and you're right kellen governments act extremely slow and inefficient and i just don't accept that as a likely path yeah i mean the more in the safe act right they were supposed to go in front of congress in december and like now, because of the new administration, uh, they're not going to even touch those again until this upcoming December. You know what I mean? Probably. So, like, we're now back at square one before they even get to reread those two acts that could potentially reshape the landscape. And I think that we need to figure out the banking issue before we can just legalize it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> the, the banking is going to happen soon. They've already discussed that that's going to happen sooner rather than later. And if they already have, <laughs> yes, if they already have all the paperwork. What do they need to change? And I think the saying that I've heard is like the Senate can walk and chew gum at the same time, which is like horribly embarrassing to think that we pay these people or they represent us and they can't do that. Considering here we are juggling 90 million things and they're like, no, we're good. We talked about a issue today. It's time to go home. <laughs> cool. Well, I put Chad with a side tangent. Where, Chad, if the people are interested in learning more about Purple or speaking with you directly, do you have any social handles or way to get in touch? Uh, yeah, so we're at, at uh, purplescientific.com. Uh, 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 that's P U R P L uh, Scientific. Or, uh, or uh, if you go to findpurple.com, that'll take you to our website as well. Um, and, uh, we have a pretty active Instagram and, and, uh, we repost a lot of our user content, um, as well, because, uh, like we're talking about from the, from a party trick standpoint, people like to show off the results, uh, and they, they like to video the reveal. Um, yeah. we'll definitely link everything in the show notes. So for any of you home growers out there that are interested in scooping a purple, we'll put all the information in there. Chad, I appreciate your time and look forward to catching up with you again soon. Brian Kellen. Thanks for having me. Take care. Ha!
Hi, it's Justin Benton, host of the Miracle Plant Podcast, where we discuss this miracle plant that goes by so many names and how it's helping people in so many extraordinary ways. So if you love this plant and you want to hear a story that tugs on those heartstrings and learn more about this plant, then head on over to the Miracle Plant Podcast. You'll be glad you did. Thank you.